also exciting as well. Georgia and Kentucky. Wildcats have never lost three straight games under Coach Calipari. What do you expect tonight? I expect Kentucky to win the game, but they've got to contain J.J. Frazier off the bounce and Yante Maton. You're talking about him on the block, and he also shoots 47% from the three-point line. I know Georgia loves to play man-to-man, but the first thing, you have to keep Kentucky out of transition because they love to play fast. That's where they get a lot of easy bunnies. And I would try to change up defenses as much as possible. Get Kentucky, they're a young basketball team, make them think in the half court. Wildcats haven't lost three straight games since Billy Gillespie was the coach back in 2009. Brent Musburger, of course, is calling the game. He has been... A broadcasting legend and giving us so many memories. Jay Will, what are you thinking of tonight when we're about to listen to Brent call one final game? You said it perfectly. He is the Frank Sinatra of broadcasting. That's who he is on the sports side. You know when Brent Musburger calls a game, the game just feels big. Yeah, see that's I mean, the game is just bigger but when Brent Musburger is on the call. Kentucky, Georgia, you know what I'm feeling? Yeah. It feels big to it me. It feels big. Yeah, Leaf that... fitting big. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't sure how to really epitomize what he's brought to the table, but when you guys say feel big, moves It's past. hard for you to feel big, but I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You take that I comment in so up. many different directions. <laughs> this is a PG network. <laughs> this is going to be a ton of fun. Brent Musburger's last call. These jokers, Seth Greenberg and Jim Williams. <laughs> I'm Mad Nambrook. We'll see you at that. I cannot I'm wait here. to hear this. It's One I'm more, here. you are looking live. Let's go. Brent, you're the man. Take it away. This is for you, buddy. <laughs> you are looking live at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. The lights are off. The crowd uneasy. Their beloved Wildcats have lost two games in a row and never in John Calipari's career at Kentucky has he lost three straight. Georgia thinks that they can come in here as a huge underdog and walk off with the upset. What a night at the rough as the Cats are going to be introduced. Super Tuesday presented by CenturyLink continues from Lexington, Kentucky. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Good evening. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. Pleased to have Jay Billis along. Want to know why I got to retire? Listen, I covered this guy when he was playing. In fact, I did his last game. Just take a look. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. Between them, Louisville and Duke have a combined winning streak of 37 straight games. Number 21, Jay Billis. Duke and Louisville. The national championship is at stake. Ellison. It is a freshman who has led the way here tonight. A championship game that lived up to his billing. One point lead by Louisville. Billis puts it in. The Cardinals have won the national championship. I hope you have a better last game than I did. <laughs> oh, you had some big hoops in there, though. Uh, Jay, listen, we have a late-breaking story regarding Kentucky. So let's quickly go to Kaylee Hartung. Kaylee? Well, Brent, speed and depth are two qualities we've come to associate with Kentucky basketball, but tonight they've got less of both as three players have been scratched from their lineup tonight. Most notably, point guard De'Aaron Fox. He's not even in the building. He's home in bed, sick with a stomach bug. And also, guard Michael Mulder, who initially was sidelined 10 days ago with an illness of his own, he continues to recover. So we're looking at a Kentucky lineup with really three guards available. And the third guy out, freshman forward Sasha Kalia Jones. Brent, the only time we've gotten a look at Kentucky without here in Fox really in the second half of the South Carolina game 10 days ago. The staff afterwards said the team was discombobulated without him. We'll see if they've learned from that. All right, Kaylee, thank you so much. And Jay, impact on this game. It affects their speed and it changes roles and it makes Kentucky bigger and not quite as fast. That means that Isaiah Briscoe is going to have to handle the point for a good part of the game. And that means he's not going to be in the middle of that zone operating against Georgia's zone. And you, you know that Georgia's going to play a lot of zone after what Kansas did to Kentucky. Jay, let's take a look now at the lineup, what it means as far as the starters are concerned. Isaac Humphreys, he started only one game and that was a year ago. Derek Willis, a senior, is also in that starting lineup for them. Now for Georgia, coming off that big comeback win over Texas. And, of course, there are a couple of players. Yante Maton, that's a guy to keep an eye on. He's number one. Kentucky practiced long and hard on dropping double teams on him today. And there is the young man from Pontiac, Michigan. 
Settle back, everybody. Underway in Lexington. First possession, Jay. What do we expect to see from Briscoe without Fox? Well, Briscoe is going to have to handle the ball. That changes his role. It doesn't mean that he can't do it. He's an excellent ball handler, and he can do a solid job at the point. But that means somebody else is going to have to operate in the middle of that zone. And Isaac Humphreys and Bam Adebayo are going to have to share the lane. That's two big bodies in there. So it did not take long for Monk to come down the baseline and draw the game's first foul, and it's on Parker. George is in basically a 2-3 zone, and they will match up out of it whenever Monk is running the baseline. They're going to stick with him. They don't want him to get free at any time. He's the dangerous player here for Kentucky. Risco comes down the baseline, and it is... Well defended by Ogbede. There's Maiton's first field goal. Hits a three. Now when he can move his game outside, and Calipari made that point in practice today, he's even more dangerous. And that's his 18th three on the season. Only hit one last year. He's really expanded his game. And Brent, having two big guys in the lineup at the same time with Humphreys and Bam Adebayo, that means the transition defense is going to be more of a challenge for Kentucky. Now here is Humphreys. Big Australian trying to roll the hook shot in. Georgia basketball. There it is. Outside and now inside. And he is the man to watch. If you're a Georgia fan, you're loving what you're seeing early. Toughest matchup for Kentucky is Yante Maiden. That means Bam Adebayo at a four has got to guard him. That is a difficult assignment for Bam Adebayo. Turned it over. Stepped out of bounds. Yante Maiden, we saw him hit the three coming down in transition. Now he goes down into the post. He's got Adebayo with an angle and gets inside position, able to get to the other side of the rim. And, you know, Brent, Derek Ogbede may be the most important player on this Georgia team because he's playing the five spot. As long as he stays out of trouble, that means Maiton can operate at the four. Good pass. Maiton wasn't expecting it, though, and he runs it down to the corner. That's Frazier, of course. A fine little point guard. Now he gets it in, jump hook, Maiton again. Got caught on the switch, and all of a sudden Adebayo was guarding J.J. Frazier, and that left Isaiah Briscoe inside on Maiton. Here's Monk, pull up right baseline. Humphreys, short after he yanked down the offensive rebound. And I see that Gabriel is up. He'll check in quickly for Kentucky. He has been in the starting lineup. They got to bring that double team quicker. And there it is, Jay. You said Obede was going to be a force. Young man from Atlanta, only a sophomore. Quiet in the rough arena. These fans are really uneasy. Kentucky got caught in a switch off a side pick and roll and all of a sudden Isaiah Briscoe having to guard Yante Maiton down low and that is a total mismatch and Maiton passing out of the double team to Obede who goes right to the rim and it has been Brent all Georgia in the early going. Four for four. Meanwhile Kentucky 0 for four. They've turned it over once. Ball on the floor again and the possession arrow goes to Georgia. You know, Kaylee Hartung started out our broadcast by talking about Kentucky without De'Aaron Fox being discombobulated in that second half against South Carolina. They are beyond discombobulated right now. They haven't been able to run anything coherent on the offensive end, and they have not gotten a stop on defense. Jackson gives it back now. Now the shot's inside of 10, and Frazier. Off the dribble, oh. and one. Oh, mercy, Jay. J.J. Frazier, the lefty, the only senior on this roster, has been seven of his last 25, and head coach Mark Fox has taken him into the gym the last couple of days to work on his shot, on his technique, his footwork. And Mark Fox felt like J.J. Frazier was going to shoot the ball much better in this game. And if that's any indication, 
Mark Fox is right. A 12-point lead. Kentucky searching for its first point there, of course, is Mark Fox, eighth season with the Bulldogs. Still can't score, but Gabriel off the bench. Offensive rebound and a putback. Now because of Kentucky's size, they may not be as quick or as fast without De'Aaron Fox on the floor, but that means they've got to get to the glass, especially against this zone. Second shot opportunities are going to be vital for Kentucky if they want to win this game. A spin move inside, and uh, that was Mike Edwards. He's a sophomore out of Michigan and has been struggling. And there's no way that Wenyan Gabriel can let that pass get through. Didn't get a deflection, didn't get any kind of hand on it. That's just way too easy. Gabriel worked long on his outside shot in practice before the game. Monk feeds Bam. Muscling. Up. Offensive foul. Just threw that shoulder right into Yante Maiden. That's the third turnover for Kentucky. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by CenturyLink. Your link to what's next. And in part by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Jay, Jay, if I'd have known that I could get all this loot, I'd have left play-by-play -play a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, it's been unbelievable. The Georgia, I did that spring game. They gave me the roster of those players at their practice today. That was wonderful for Coach Cal in Kentucky. And you got your jersey retired. That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good day. It's been a pretty it's, good day. Hey, has, Duke, has Duke retired your jersey yet? No, I had my own private ceremony where I retired it. They, they, they disavow any knowledge of my playing there. Awesome. But I'll tell you who's had a great day has been Yante made Seven points right out of the gate. Georgia six for six from the field. Kentucky one of six with three turnovers. Now Kentucky going to his own. They're going 2-3, and this is a, a statement that they can't guard Yante Maiden. Frazier missed firing. And it goes to Kentucky. Well, college basketball continues Thursday night here on ESPN. Big Ten matchup. Michigan State taking on Nebraska. Jay, did you tell me that Michigan State's getting a little bit better? They are getting better. They've gotten healthier now with Miles Bridges back. And Cassius Winston has taken over the point guard position, one of the best passers in the country. You know, Michigan State lost basically their whole front court before the season even started. And now with Dominique Hawkins into the game, number 25 for Kentucky, that means that Isaiah Briscoe can operate inside that zone. And that's where he's most effective, right? Yeah, now it's and one. Jay is coming to the free throw line. But I, I tell you, having watched Kentucky like you did Saturday night, you, you guys did a great job on that uh, Kansas game. You and Dan uh, Schulman, a great, great win for the Jayhawks. But they have got to get Monk. They have got to find shots for Monk, or, or this Kentucky team is not going to win. I think that's exactly right. And part of that's on Malik Monk, just a freshman. But he's got to move better without the ball and hunt his shots, especially against the zone. You've got to move, and the ball's got to move. And... That's one thing that I don't think Kentucky did a great job of, and that's ball movement. And they, they tended to, it's like a like a hitter swinging at the first pitch all the time. They're swinging for home runs off the first pitch instead of working the count, working the ball, and making the defense move. Maiden gets a break, but look who came on. Pop Chiata, the junior from Senegal with that field goal. Well, Chiata went to the College of Southern Idaho, and that, just, that drive got into the paint so easily. Gabriel, well defended, back up with a tap. Humphreys can't get it to fall. Humphreys has had a couple of good looks, and he just can't score. He is a talented player. Hasn't played all that much because he's got some more talented players in front of him. But last year at Texas A&M had perhaps his best game. Harris rips a three. But Jordan Harris, the lefty, was wide open at the top of that zone. Nary a hand up to bother that shot. 
Willis and Winyard due to check in for Kentucky at the next opportunity. Gabriel steps out. That was a good rebound by Jordan Harris. He has the chance, Brent, to be an excellent defender. I think Jawan Parker is the Georgia's best defender right now, but I think Harris will be. Loose. And Monk got a little too active, trying to help the big guys out, and the ball is knocked out of bounds, so it'll be Georgia, Georgia basketball. You know, whether it's man or zone, you have to have a sense of urgency. And just a tiny little screen there, and Dominic, uh, Dominic uh, Hawkins goes right underneath it instead of going over the top, and Isaiah Briscoe just kind of stood there, and nobody got a hand up on Harris. And Hawkins is one of their best defenders, but everybody looks like they're running in sand right now in a white jersey. Ball is out of bounds. Monk with a good defensive play now. But they really need to get him going here offensively. And Georgia's doing a terrific job of not letting that happen. Now Hawkins basically running the point out top. And Briscoe's where they need to get the ball into the middle. And then they can kick it out. But the ball's been going around the perimeter. There he comes through the middle. Couldn't score. And there's our guy back on the floor. Mayton with a defensive rebound. They'll kick it back outside. Maiden Scott, yeah, that's a good pass. You gotta get it. They need to get it into him. Lead pass. And a blocking foul. Well, Yante Maiden had Malik Monk on him. And you can see, Brent, when Kentucky can get a stop, they can still get out and run. But you're not going to run when you're taking the ball out of the net over and over again. That was a good call on the block. <laughs> Coach Cal. He was pretty fired up in practice today, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, and uh, he was fired up on his radio show last night. He keeps... Because it's a young team that he's always coaching, he keeps a very enthusiastic approach to what's going on. I've watched him here the last three weeks, and it's been interesting. He uh, tries to build up their confidence. They're trying to dig from behind now. This is a great start by this Georgia team. Win tonight against Kentucky, and this team starts to look like a March Madness team. Offensive foul, however, is the call here. Giada turns it over. Well, he just got into what's called the cylinder now of the defender, Isaiah Briscoe. You can see the catch and the turn. And even though he was up top, his arms were more horizontal than vertical. And they're looking to see there was no, there was really no contact as far as an elbow was concerned. John's helping him out. Look at that. He's making the call. We got the ball. We got the ball. Yeah, it's their ball on the on the call, but. I didn't see any contact, sort of elbow to face or anything where it would be considered flagrant. It's an offensive foul, but I don't think it was necessarily because of the elbow. You know, you wonder with the uh, the fans here in the stands, if all of them know that De'Aaron Fox is not even in the building and certainly will not play. And, uh, of course, he becomes questionable for further down the week. They've got a game on Saturday. Sasha Kalia Jones... He's also ill and out. Mulder has not been able to return. This is a very shorthanded Kentucky team. And uh, our officiating crew, by the way, here tonight, Tony Green, Pat Adams, and Don Daly. Jay? Yeah, they decided it was a play on, uh, just as we had discussed. Derek Willis, one of the seniors on this Kentucky team, inbound of the pass. Here comes Briscoe. Willis, one of the best shooters on this Kentucky team, in addition to Malik Monk, and he's got to look to free himself up. There it is. He traveled. Called a foul on Ty Winyard inside. Boy, you, you hardly ever see Brent Derek Willis hesitate when he catches the ball. He has a really quick trigger, but for some reason he hesitated. I even thought he walked before he shot it. Georgia is much more confident when Frazier 
is on the floor, as he is right now, bringing the ball. It's interesting to watch number 30 here as the point guard. Got the switch. Can he get it back now? Come the other way. Where he got the open man and beautifully blocked. And that was Monk with that great athletic ability. Frazier can't put it down. And here come the Cats. Again, that time he didn't hesitate, but he's off the front of the iron. Driscoll, great offensive rebound. Gives it back to Monk. The crowd loved that. Hawkins, here he comes again. Bingo! You know, one of the greatest games ever played, not one of the greatest championship games in NCAA history. We'll revisit that night, Rupp Arena, Lexington, Kentucky, when we come back. Hi, I'm Brent Musburger. You know, this one championship game transcends a lot more than just this season. It's the 1985 NCAA championship between Villanova and Georgetown. Gary McLean, the shot's there on its way. Villanova regains the lead. This would be one of the greatest upsets in the history of championship games. And there are just five seconds it's left. Over. There will be no dynasty. Villanova has done it. Jay, uh, you were down at Duke. Did you watch the game with some of your oh, teammates? Yeah. I watched it with all my teammates. Yeah, we, we were we were actually ranked number two early in that year to Georgetown as number one. And I remember we had won a game, and as we were walking off the floor, our crowd started chanting, we want Georgetown, we want Georgetown. And I was thinking, <laughs> well, maybe you do, but I'd have to guard Patrick Ewing. I don't, I don't really want that. <laughs> it was just a, a, a great, great night here, one, one that I will never forget, and it is so terrific to close out play-by-play -play career here back at the Rupp. And who knows, we could have another upset brewing. Do we have a howling underdog in the house? You bet we do. The Georgia Bulldog. You know, Brent, Georgia's gone through some difficulties in the past few weeks. You know, they lost an overtime game to Florida where a few calls did not go their way that they thought should have. And then the game against Texas A&M where the clock stopped with five point second, uh, six seconds left. And... They weren't allowed, essentially, to, by rule, to get off their last shot or the last play. The clock ran out after they, they went to the monitor and timed it. So they were a little bit of a broken spirit. But they don't look like their spirit's broken in this one. They came to fight here. Briscoe drives, draws the foul, and let's check in with Kaylee. Well, Brent, this Kentucky staff very mindful of this short rotation that they've got in this game. The conversation during that last huddle was one in which, hey, we need everybody to play. So if you're tired, let us know. We'll sub you out. Very conscious here of the way they've got to make use of the players they do have. Humphreys returns. And a little from New Zealand. Ty Winyard sits back now. We've got a youngster from Sydney, Australia. And another from Auckland, New Zealand. Playing for the Kentucky Wildcats. Now here's Monk, who's still scoreless on this game. They're doing a good job of switching on him. Briscoe drives to the hole. The more that Kentucky moves the ball and gets cutters against this zone, which is matching up against them, the more good shots they are getting. And they did not do that against Kansas. On the turnover, Monk's going to come to the rim. His first field goal of the night, and here come the catch. Kentucky can still run without De'Aaron Fox, but they've got to get stops in order to do it. Parker. Nice looking shot for the baseline, Joe. What a strong move by Juwan Parker, who has really had a terrific performance in the SEC. 12 points a game since it started. Turn it back over now. Great defense by the dogs. They're not giving ground a bit in this game. There's that floater left-handed by Frazier. 
Hawkins have got Monk. Monk spots. Well, that was a good shot in transition. Baseline drive, and Malik Monk just drifted into the corner, and you're not going to get a more open look. Great defense by Monk. Muscles in. And he was fouled on the play. After starting out slowly on both ends of the floor, Kentucky's really picked up their defense. You see Derek Willis here doing a good job of playing on the line, up the line, getting in front of Yante Maiden, knocking that ball away and starting the transition that allows Malik Monk to get all the way to the rim. Malik Monk with quick hands, taking it away from Jawan Parker. And then Parker jumping in front, fouling yep. him on the deck. You know, I have to say, I like the NBA rule on that better. Yes. They need to have some sort of continuation. Absolutely. Where you got no, a guy no, with a breakaway. No, no question. I yeah. mean, he's, he's coming in, and uh, that cost him two points out of bounds. So here we go. Hawkins wide open. This fires, and that did cost him a field goal that trip. Kentucky sticking with man-to-man. -man. They played some zone, but the zone was really soft. And Georgia has stuck zone the entire first half to this point. Saved it. That was a heck of a post pass on the save. It was. Frazier kicks. Tap back. And the ball goes out of bounds. John Calipari is not happy with the official down there. Well, a reminder uh, for college football fans, uh, tomorrow's a huge day, National Signing Day, and, of course, great coverage at 8 a.m. on ESPNU. It goes to ESPN2 at noon, and then it's back to the U at 5 to, to wrap up the day. Georgia, one of the top teams right now, so we'll see how that turns out tomorrow, but uh, still a lot of good players to be signed. 22-14, Georgia's basketball team with a lead on Kentucky. Frazier into Briscoe's hands. Briscoe's been the leader of this team tonight, no question about it. Monk has oh, a stolen, playing. what a great play. And Frazier lays it in. So that's the kind of thing, Brent, that might get J.J. Frazier going a little bit. Now he's got that initial floater where he got fouled, but since then, he hasn't been getting anything to go. Hawkins on a runner. Humphreys again. This time, yes. With some consistent playing time, Isaac Humphreys has a chance to be a really good player. He's still very young, but a really skilled player that can play pick and roll, pick and pop. He's got all the shots. He just needs game experience. Feels it. Really read the passer's eyes there. Briscoe. Gabriel hustles it up. Here's Humphreys inside. Dangerous pass, and it led to a turnover. Yeah, I'm not sure when when Gabriel hustled to get that ball. I don't think the pass was to Humphreys there. That's the pass that essentially led to the turnover. and into Humphrey's hands. Awfully difficult shot. And one reason that J.J. Frazier has struggled shooting the ball of late has been his shot selection. Now that wasn't an open shot. That was a challenge shot that didn't need to be taken. Hawkins outside for the three. Great rebounding. Position by Will Reach. And so far, Malik Monk has played really hard, but he's not been able to get open for much offense in this one. That, the zone has really affected him. Good feed. And scoring is the big fella. Obede, sophomore from Atlanta. Looks like he's got a good future. The one thing he has to do is stay out of foul trouble, stay on the floor. And out of bio, He's getting a long rest. Briscoe. And 
there's Humphrey's second field goal, and Bam may sit a little bit longer if Humphreys is going to get in there and clean up underneath the rim like that. Well, Adebayo's got those two fouls, and there's no reason to put him back in as long as Isaac Humphreys is playing so well. Exactly. Good drive by Gino and passes it off to Obede, who had his hands ready. But Isaac Humphreys keeping Kentucky close. <laughs> Thanks, guys. But, uh, but I've warned Jay. He can't kiss me like Dick Vitale did on Saturday. And our, my old buddy Vitale, we sent along hello to him. All the great broadcasts on him over Jay, you're one of them. It's been oh, it's, a, it's an honor to be with you, and I got another hour and a half to talk you out of this. <laughs> okay. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> here we go, lad. We got a good one here, Jay. Uh, for those who have just joined us, give everybody a little bit of update on what's going on here. Well, Georgia has started out in a zone against Kentucky, and they have stayed in it. Now Kentucky going to a 2-3 zone. They have played a little bit of zone. But it really, Brent, was keeping Kentucky in this after an amazing start by Georgia has been the second shot opportunities. They've done a really good job, the Wildcats have, of getting the offensive glass. Tap again. Battle in underneath. And that was Gabriel battling away. Jay, just as you were talking about that, they were going hard to the offensive glass again. And that's one of the difficulties when you play zone is block out responsibilities. Doesn't mean you can't rebound out of it. But Kentucky playing without De'Aaron Fox, who is ill, not even in the building. And we were told he did not come in today at all, basically stayed in his room the whole day. But that's taken away a, a lot of Kentucky speed, and it's changed roles. Isaiah Briscoe having to play the point that he can't operate in the middle of that zone unless Dominique Hawkins is in the game running the point. And Kentucky much bigger along the front line. Stepped out of bounds. Kentucky Brent has got to find a way to get Malik Monk untracked. He has got to get some shot attempts. And thus far in the game, he's only really had a couple. I mean, he's one of four. He's got three turnovers. He's done a good job defensively. He's got a couple of steals. But they've got to find him some shots. There's a three. That's what Gabriel worked on prior to the start of this game. And he pulls Kentucky to within five. And finally, the rough crowd starting to climb in. And now Georgia operating on the perimeter of the zone and not getting the ball into the gaps of it. They need to drive these gaps. Making sure. Kentucky again. Briscoe, he's been a man of high energy tonight. Here comes Gabriel. Now it's Willis, catch and shoot. That time they screened off the offensive rebound. Did a better job that time. Much better block out, especially by Yante Maiden. But that was a wide open shot by Derek Willis because of the great ball movement and the dribble drive attack into the gaps of that zone. That was a really good zone attack. Moving out of control. And so the Kentucky ball, when we come back, Georgia has led it all the way. 26 21, 327 in the first. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Well, this hasn't been an offensive clinic by Kentucky, but their attack of the zone in the last few possessions has been much better because they have moved the ball. They've moved themselves, and then as the ball moves, then they attack gaps. Now, you see right here, as they attack that gap, Isaiah Briscoe gets two to play one, and that leaves Derek Willis wide open for a jump shot. Now, he doesn't make this jump shot, but it gives them an opportunity for a wide open shot and then also for offensive boards and that's where Kentucky has gotten back in this game and has made it a game is with their offensive rebounding they've got nine offensive rebounds and nine second chance points off those offensive boards it's nine to nothing in second chance points Gabriel misfiring battles to get it back and there's a second chance point he earned it all himself that time 
Man's given a spark. He did not start here tonight. Kentucky not shooting 30% yet in this game. They've been one of the leaders. They finally dropped under 50% after that loss to Kansas. And Brent George is going to have to get tougher. I mean, Mike Edwards had that ball in his hands, and Gabriel just took it straight away from him. Turn it over. Let's go to Kaylee. John Calipari likes what he's seeing with those second chance points opportunities. You guys were just talking about the directive in that last huddle was for Isaiah Briscoe to keep attacking the rim. Even if he doesn't make it, they like what they see with the way the team's fighting at the rim. Winyard is now down in the low block, number 14. Briscoe has it stripped away, and it goes over to Georgia. Well, just what Kaylee Hartung was talking about, Isaiah Briscoe attacking the rim. And I think he's got to attack the gaps of the zone to try to get to the rim and score. And that way he's more likely to draw two defenders to him, and then he can kick it out if he has to. He just don't want to drive necessarily to pass. Gabriel hands it off. Frisco's got a man, and Monk. Monk is a foul. And Frazier runs into Monk. Yeah, it was a late call, but the right call. Absolutely. The crowd was on its feet. They were ready to boo these officials if that whistle was not blown on this. And there was heavy contact watch right yeah. here. Had two hands on him. Knocked no the doubt ball away. It. Yeah, you had to call that. It was just a little bit late. But Mark Fox, very disappointed in his team for not having more of a sense of urgency to get back. But they're putting themselves in bad spots. They haven't, their shot selection has not been good ever since Kentucky went to the zone the second time. So the last five, five, seven minutes or so, they have not done a good job of attacking Kentucky's zone. So Monk now. Knocks down both free throws. And remember the Wildcats trailed the dogs 12-0 to start this game. They are now back to within one. And with all the turnovers and the low shooting percentage, because Kentucky's shooting around 30% in this first half, to be within one is pretty remarkable. And he got the shooter's bounce. Three for Frazier. Monk on the drive, and he'll be at the free throw line again. So Monk's starting to attack now. Coming down the baseline, and they worked long and hard on that at practice today, too. Well, even scoring, Georgia's got to get back in a more effective manner. I mean, taking the ball out of the net, Kentucky passed ahead. And that was a great job by Malik Monk of running the sideline. One, one or two dribbles, pass ahead, and all of a sudden he's got an angle to get to the bucket and was almost able to complete that play. And that puts a lot of pressure on your transition defense when you score and you've got to sprint back. It's like the old Celtics, you know, you'd score on the old Celtics and they would throw the ball ahead and lay it in on you, demoralize it. Do you do any Celtics games when you're younger? <laughs> <laughs> Triple over time with the Boston guys. Right. Frazier, not this time. So it's going to be Georgia basketball. Minute and a half left here in the first half. Both these coaches making adjustments throughout the course of the game. John Calipari going to this zone. The zone has been the game plan for Georgia. Something they run quite often, and they're very good at it. This is a, this is a solid defensive team that Mark Fox has. Bill Self went to the zone with Kansas, and that paid a huge dividend in the Jayhawks' comeback against Kentucky on Saturday night. And triangle in two as well, just like he did last year at Allen's Fieldhouse against, uh, against Kentucky. A bit of a wild shot. Briscoe brings it down, and here's Monk. Pull it up. Fire the three. No. Long rebound, though. Briscoe. Well, Georgia's first shot defense is not bad, but they are giving up way too many second opportunities. So a foul is called as Briscoe put it down. Just overpowered Trump. That's his first. 
Isaiah yeah, Briscoe is such a strong guard. He looks like he could be a running back in the NFL. Or a defensive back. Mm -hmm. Shooting for the top. And that shot is something he has really worked hard on. He had a triple-double earlier this year at Ole Miss. And you see how he got it? He, he was a rebound short, and Derek Willis missed a free throw on purpose and missed it so it would go to the side that Isaiah Briscoe was on. It was really, really impressive. So, after being down 12, Wildcat fans on their collective feet. Inside of 40 seconds, first half. Mayton. That is not a bad foul there because it's only the 15th foul. It saved a bucket because Yante Maiden was going to score. Kentucky went back to man to man and they went a little side pick and roll and Maiden was wide open. That foul saved an easy basket. Smart play. Malik Monk doing a good job defensively. So he can guard when he wants to. Yeah, they're calling Monk for the foul. The crowd doesn't like it, but the referee's right. You can put your hand on, but you can't do this. Frazier and Monk exchanging a little a few words out there. And uh, now Monk will go off and uh, Calipari saying you shouldn't do that it's an unnecessary foul and here comes Frazier now shot clock is off they can bring it down you can see they're coaching the young man up on the sideline Frazier going to take it Aaron pass 2.8 Hawkins at the buzzer deadlocked at 29 Gabriel was a key player for John Calabari, and he came off the bench. Let's go to Kaylee. Well, Coach, a lead by as many as 14 points. What do you need to do to get back to that success? Well, we got to take care of the ball. We, we knew that, that uh, we, we, we felt like we'd come out and play well, and we knew they'd come back. Uh, but we got to take a little bit of care of the basketball and then keep them off the glass. What is the answer to all those second-chance points Kentucky's able to get? You know what? We need to do a better job competing on the backboard. It's going to have to start with some effort, some grit. Uh, but give them credit. they got a great team, and, and uh, they're going to the glass hard. Uh -huh. So stay tuned now for Adnan Vert, Jay Billis's best booster, Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams, and the Alfa Romeo Halftime Report right after these messages. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> Back to Super Tuesday presented by CenturyLink. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Georgia once up by 14. Now deadlocked with Kentucky at Rupp Arena in Lexington. Jay Billis, take us through some of these highlights. Well, Georgia, Brent, started off so well going against Kentucky's man-to-man -man defense. They got the ball inside to Yante Maiden. They got mismatches, and Maiden took advantage of it, scored the first seven points for Georgia, but did not score after that. Wound up the first half with seven points, and points in the paint were big early for Georgia, but then the offensive rebounding for Kentucky was the difference. They had 11 offensive rebounds, 13 points off those offensive rebounds and Georgia turned it over 10 times in the first half that's why Kentucky was able to pull even that zone that Kentucky went to really changed I thought the course of the first half so Kentucky is shorthanded tonight and John Calipari is working with a short bench on the other side of it Mark Fox has used a lot of players in this game he has he's looking for combinations too and trying to get guys that will fight on the glass a little bit more but they're deeper in this ball game but they want to go with their core they want J.J. Frazier and Yante Maiden to be the leaders and those guys have got to put more points on the board in the second half. They can't just get 58 and win this thing. Let's go to Kayla. Well, Brent, John Calipari is ecstatic, believe it or not. That's what he told me. He said, I'm ecstatic that this game is tied right now. He said, we should be down by 20, but this team fought like hell and worked their way back. Now, one of the key areas of focus for this team following Saturday's loss to Kansas, Cal said all week was about toughness, mental and physically. We'll see how that comes into play in the second half. 
Adebayo played only five minutes in the first half. He had two fouls. Now, a couple of players off that bench. First of all, Gabriel did not start tonight, and he was a very, very key man for Kentucky on the floor. He had five of those offensive rebounds that Jay told you about, and he will start the second half. Briscoe has been the energizer bunny. He's out here. Willis, Bam is out there, and Monk who's been rather quiet, but did make some big free throws. And here comes Briscoe now. And a foul here to uh, start the second half. Briscoe helped up beyond the end line. A little sore right now. And Kentucky trying to get some movement with dribble handoffs. and They want to get the defense to move first and then attack it. If you attack off the first side of the first pass, it's going to be awfully difficult to get anything good. And that's what they did in the first half. Their, their, their attack early was not very good. But they settled in and attacked it much better. But really, Brent, you, you called it. They're, Kentucky's best offense in the first half was a missed shot. And they go get it and put it back in. Quick step to the right. Miss fires. Georgia has to continue to be smart in that zone. The guys that they can extend to or should extend to are Derek Willis and Malik Monk. But they don't want to overextend to any other players and open it up for drives. Yes, that's a beautiful pass and an easy field goal for Obede. It's really important, Brent. Anytime the ball, you're trying to get a post up, there's got to be pressure on the ball. If you can take away vision, you can give the post defender a little bit more time to catch up. Let's go. Nails it. We're tied again. Kentucky has never led in this game. Attacking. Couldn't get it to fall in the second chance, and here comes Briscoe. Traveling. Well, Georgia got the ball to the high post, and immediately, Yante Maiden was looking down to Derek Ogbede, and he got a great angle in the post on Wenyan Gabriel, but Bam Adebayo really didn't get any pressure on Maiden, so Maiden could just pick him apart. And this is a tough matchup for Adebayo. Having to guard Yante Meaton is not going to be easy for him because he's got to guard out on the perimeter. Now they got a mismatch. And Meaton. And Monk stays right with it. Briscoe. A hustle's Frazier gets to the ball. A little off balance, but it'll fall. And Kentucky leads for the first time tonight. Kaylee Hartung talked about toughness. That was the toughness of Isaiah Briscoe. Not only... Oh, that's number three on Bam. Yeah, two hands right on the back of Yante and Maiden. Anytime you got two hands on the ball handler, they're going to call that. Well, you mentioned it, Brent. Isaiah Briscoe just out-battled J.J. Frazier and was quicker to the ball. And he actually could have gotten him one here because there was a hand right in his back when he went up for that left-hander off the glass. So Humphreys replaces him. Nathan off the dribble. It'll fall. Anytime he sets a screen, Yante Nathan is likely going to be open, whether it's pick and pop, pick and roll. He can force a switch and then take advantage of the mismatch. Briscoe. Humphreys coming up over the top. Foul. Yante Maiden going to set a little ball screen up top. And when he does, he's just going to pop. And now all of a sudden he's got Wenyan Gabriel on him. He's much stronger than Gabriel. And was able to get a straight line drive to the basket. Obede turn it around. Humphreys with a defensive rebound. And here comes Briscoe. That's well, interesting. Most of the success in the first half break. Couldn't finish. Gabriel. A 
couple of the officials conferring right now, and it's going to go back to Kentucky. Any time that Kentucky drives, they're not going to throw a bounce pass. They're going to throw that ball up to the rim. Gabriel couldn't get it to go. And the referee said the ball went off of Yante Maiden instead of Isaac Humphreys. Monk. Yes. Kentucky's sticking with man-to-man. -man. They had their most success in the first half playing that zone. I think they should look to Yante Maiden. He's wide open in the post. Give it to him. Inside of 10. Frazier on the pull-up. Monk came at him late. Humphreys with a defensive board, and here comes Prisco. Frazier has really struggled to get shots to go down. Monk off the dribble. Tough shot. A three. Look out now if you're Georgia. He scores in bunches. And this is where you need to have a bucket on the road to quiet the crowd. Obede. Parker will go for it. Muck. Terrific rebounding position looking for daylight. And Bristol said he was hit on the arm, but he fires it out of bounds. John wanted to foul on the play, and take a look here, Jay. Uh, Malik Monk is an outstanding jump shooter. He can catch and shoot like he did here, ready to shoot as the ball arrives, and he's also excellent pulling up and doing so with Yante Maiden right in his grill. Moments ago, Brent Musburger out to the center court of Rupp Arena to be the Y in Kentucky. The footwork, excellent. The form, impeccable. With that Northwestern education, an outstanding spell. That was awesome. Just awesome. Jay, the old man's out of breath. <laughs> Take off after the Out of breath. That's the most exercise I've had in a couple of weeks. You have shaken more hands and kissed more babies today than any politician ever. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. That'd have been great. Vitel taught me how to do that. <laughs> <Did he? laughs> so here we go. Georgia basketball now. They trail it by six. Well, Vitel kissed you twice in your last game, did he? I know. I hope you're I hope you're not expecting one from me. I don't kiss on the last date. <laughs> Frazier. Three is good, and they needed that, Jay. They, they did. really did. Big out, shot. out of the timeout, the ball moved there. And that was a shot that was taken in full rhythm by JJ Frazier. He'd taken so many challenge shots. Catch and shoot. There he is. Here he comes. Well, Mike Edwards just got caught up on a little screen on the baseline and was late getting out there. And there are two guys you have got to get out to on the perimeter. Malik Monk is one, and Derek Willis is the other. If the others make jump shots on you, you have to live with them. Mayton. Nice jump hook, Jay. Well, that was fantastic. He is such a good player. But he needs to touch the ball more often. At the other end, Bay responds. Actually, his best offensive move of the night. Adebayo set a screen for Malik Monk on the baseline and then ducked in right in front of Yante Maiden. But it was the screen that really helped him get open. Maiton coming again. Got the roll. He's taking over down to that low block. He's got to be the main man. Well, he can go down and post and he can step away. Both Gabriel and Adebayo are down on the low block. And they're getting some screens. They are screening and then getting open because they're screening. Frisco travel. Take a look at Bam Adebayo here. Adebayo is going to settle a screen along the baseline. There'll be a baseline runner, and that'll be Malik Monk. And as he goes past him, you're just going to see him step right into the lane and get right in front of Yante Maiden. And Yante Maiden's got to be a little more active to keep that ball from going in there. 
Parker on a good cut and a terrific pass by Frazier. And a nice screen up top by Maiden. Back to within two. Now, Kentucky may want to go back to the zone. That has been so effective in the first half. Wow. This is more effective. Mark nailing another three. And Maiden was right on him and was shaking his head after he made that. We've got a timeout. Malik Monk, the freshman, at 47 points against North Carolina. And hit a lot of shots just like this when had a hand right in his face and still able to knock it down. Malik Monk, the young gunner from Arkansas, four from four from outside the arc this half. And he's ignited a fire here in Lexington. So he really got himself going, Brent, in the first half, and he did it with his defense. This is the best defense I've seen Malik Monk play this season. And in the second half, he has come out really hunting his shot against this Georgia matchup zone. And Georgia's got a better, do a better job of finding him. You can't leave him or Derek Willis open from the perimeter. Let's go to Kaylee. Mark Fox was hot in that last Georgia huddle. Said some things I can't repeat, but the message was clear. You can't let Malik Monk get away with the shots he's been getting. You gotta guard him. Georgia with the basketball, trailing it by five. Once up by 14. About six minutes into this game. At the switch, good pass. Beautiful pass. Okay, way finishes strong. Yante Maiden set a ball screen and Isaiah Briscoe switched off onto him. So he was posting Briscoe, the smaller defender. And then when a secondary defender came over to double team, that was a brilliant pass by Yante Maiden. Willis on the floor. Briscoe puts it on the deck, and here comes Monk again. Five for five this half. And Fox, Coach Fox can just shake his head and walk back towards the bench. Well, at halftime, they had some policemen playing some firemen. The firemen might have to come back out here because Malik Monk won't get any hotter than he is right now. He is absolutely on fire. Malik Monk was, makes him so dangerous. He's not a one-dimensional shooter. He's not just a catch-and-shoot guy. He can put the ball on the deck, but he gets it off so quickly. And with a 42-inch vertical, he can rise up. He's got a quick release and a high release. And he locks in on that target. It doesn't matter if you get a hand up. Once he gets into his shooting motion, he is hard to deter. So Bam Adebayo, four personal fouls. The game has been a bit of a nightmare for him. And Coach Calipari will have to make a decision. Gabriel comes in. Here comes Humphreys. They're going to take Bam out now with the four. And bring Willis out. So they'll have to manage the foul problem. Lead it by five. Kenny Payne coaching him up. A difficult matchup for Bam Adebayo at the four spot to try to guard Yante Maiden. That's why he's picked up these fouls. And John Calipari just got a bench warning. And Pat Adams would like to hear a little bit less. Now man to man for Georgia. Cool off on that shot. Here's an opportunity for the dogs. Maiden being guarded by Humphreys. He's got a quickness advantage, and they need to go to him. And they do just that. Turns, baseline, comes down, Humphreys ties it. That was a great job by Yante Maiden to turn away from the double team. Double team came from the high side, and he turned baseline to try to drive Humphreys. Humphreys was straight up and down and picked up a foul as a result of it. Winyard replaces Humphreys. And there we are. Sports Center at night. Bucci and John Anderson. They'll have all the news highlights. College basketball, the NBA. That's following on ESPN here tonight. Winyard, young man from New Zealand. Yanks it away. Kentucky up five. Briscoe off balance. Drew the foul. 
And speaking of the NBA scores, how about the way Rick Berry dressed for this? One of the greatest games in NBA history. Friday night, the Boston Garden. I Havlicek touches it. It begins. Three seconds. Hondo off the glass. He's got it with a second. Throw it up. Garher, turn around, shot in the air. It's good. It's tied again. I don't believe it. Two. It's going to be all over. They battled three overtime. So, Jay, uh, you were just a young man that oh, night. Yeah, you, I was what do you remember grade. of that game? I remember that I loved JoJo White and his, his suede pro kids. And, uh, and Don Nelson, was with, when Gar Hurd scored over Don Nelson, Whoa. just I'd never seen anything like that. I'd never seen it. It was, it was an awesome game. But that was back when there was only one game on a week. And it, was, was it was a mistake. so great. There was a mistake made by an official in that game. Paul Silas called an illegal timeout. Phoenix should have been shooting for the win. Okay? And he looked right beyond him. Is that right? Call it. There's no way he didn't see it, Jay. <laughs> I've got to tell you. Richie Powers had to be looking right at it. <laughs> John McLeod was a coach at Phoenix. Al Bianchi was his assistant. And uh, it was just such a great series. Celtics won the first two, Suns next two, and then we came to that Friday night. And, of course, everybody was upset with me, but I finally told Red Arback, hey, listen, of course I was pulling for Phoenix and the two at home. I was getting paid by the game. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to six and seven, a few more Benjamins in your pocket. Yeah, exactly, why not? Since we go, oh, stolen by Mark. Cuts and this stripped away from him. And he got fouled. And Frazier by fouled him? Yep. Frazier didn't think so. Boy, when the ball went into the post, Brandon, an immediate double team came. And it came from, you see it right here, and a great job of shooting the gap by Malik Monk, who has had a fabulous basketball game. And it looked like J.J. Frazier got all ball there, but five for five from three-point land in this second half for Malik Monk. You know, in the game against Kansas on Saturday night here at Rupp, Malik Monk had 18 points in the game, but he went about 20 minutes without scoring. Went about eight or nine minutes without getting a shot against the Kansas zone, and at times they were in a triangle in two. But that has not been the case. He has been really aggressive offensively in this one. Took over in the second half. That way. Good spin move down there. So that was just a... Beautifully executed by Obeda. Just went right into the middle and then a drop step and kissed it right off the glass. Just give it. George has a good moment here tonight. Briscoe fires a three into Frazier's hands and here he comes. They've got numbers. Pull up at the free throw line off the iron, but gets it back. And then this fires on the drive and Briscoe has got an open mark. Good hustle by Georgia, gets back, and Monk's back on that free throw line. Let's go to Kaylee. Well, Jay, you mentioned the time that Malik Monk didn't have the ball in the Kansas game. Well, on Sunday, Coach Cal and Malik met one-on-one, -on -one, and Cal told him, you cannot go five-minute stretches without the ball. He told him, you've got to demand the ball. And Malik told me, Cal's pushing him just like he grew up with his mom and his older brother pushing him and just the way that he wanted Cal to push him when he made the decision to come here. Well, Kaylee, isn't it great when your coach is telling you, look, you got to shoot it more. We got to have you shoot it more. It's a good way to play. And when Malik Monk is aggressive offensively, that opens up even more things for his teammates. Here comes the trap in the backboard. Oh, did a good job of getting a handle. It looked like he was losing, but Obede. Finished it off. And really a fabulous job by J.J. Frazier in breaking that pressure and breaking it to score. Briscoe nails the J. Jordan Harris doing a nice job of staying with Malik Monk there. Maiden needs to get the ball. He's got Monk on him. Harris. And Maiden 
scores and is fouled. Well, Georgia fortunate there. Took a shot and missed everything, but Maiden was right there, and there was nothing that Malik Monk could do after switching off on him. He had inside position and then just went up, scored, and got fouled. Anytime there is a mismatch, they need to go right into Yante Maiden. You have 16 points tonight. And that's with, uh, with going about 14 or 15 minutes in the first half without scoring. And he had that initial seven points for Georgia and then was very quiet after that. And a large measure of that was Kentucky going to the zone. Wow. Difficult pop that time. Boy, yeah, you, you felt like it was going in as soon as you let it go. Frazier. And he is fouled. So a reminder that uh, college basketball continues Thursday on ESPN. Big Ten matchup. Michigan State taking on Nebraska Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. And also available streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Tim Miles doing a nice job with that Nebraska program. Ty Webster, an excellent guard. Glenn Watson, they've got a good team. And Georgia hanging tough in this game. Really, the only the only difference in the second half has been the outstanding play of Malik Monk. Willis, Briscoe, Monk, Winyard, and Hawkins on the floor for the Cats. Now they're going to let Monk go down and work along the baseline. Briscoe. And that was just a power move by Isaiah Briscoe. And Winyard is really going after Obede inside. So Maiden on the deck? No. Was fouled. Kentucky did a nice job of making the Georgia defense move, then came out for the high ball screen with Winyard, and he just goes to that left hand and goes right over Obede. I'm, I'm of the mind that that should be a continuation. They called that on the floor. But that, I think that's, where, that's exactly where the game should be, is allow that minor continuation because that that struck me as he was going right into his shooting motion when he was hit 18 for the night little consistency there we had the same kind of a call in the first half go against Wildcats yes exactly Bam is going to check back in four personals in all Winyard will sit So Adebayo has had a tough, tough night and a short night. Saddled with foul problems, played only five minutes in the first half. Without a beta in the game, you'd have to expect Adebayo to guard Maiden. And that is not a good matchup for Adebayo. Away from the ball. Yeah, they run a little... Little Iverson cut for Malik Monk and then set a little back screen for Bam Adebayo to get him in the low post and run a little two-man game. Just got fouled as that action was going on. Back to the zone and out of bounds underneath. Monk drives wrap around good. Well, if Monk is this aggressive, zone is awfully difficult to corral him. Pull up by Frazier. They did not have that bio on Maiden that time either. And here comes Briscoe. Foul. He'll shoot a pair. He is not afraid of contact. He is not. He initiates so much of it. 
But after the change in possession, this is where when Briscoe gets a rebound, he can take it up himself. And he does that whether Malik Monk's in the game, if De'Aaron Fox were available, he would still be able to do that. And that makes this break even more dangerous. Now, without De'Aaron Fox, who's out with an illness tonight, uh, Kentucky loses a good deal of its speed. It totally changed the role of Isaiah Briscoe, but he has handled it very well. Briscoe's played an excellent game. He's rebounded well. He's got 17 points so far, but he's also got eight or nine rebounds in the game. So Monk will get his last break at the eight-minute mark. Gabriel checks back in with Humphreys, Willis, Briscoe, and Hawkins. So there's an opportunity here for Georgia. Back to the zone for Kentucky. Wings are coming up, and this zone gave Georgia a ton of problems in the first half. Harris knocked away, and Humphreys commits a personal foul. So Monk, as Jay Billers told you, he's not a one-dimensional shooter. Watch him put it on the deck. Now watch the wraparound. We've got a timeout. ESPN exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by CenturyLink. Your link to what's next. And in part by Totino's Pizza Rolls. Golden, crispy, delicious. <laughs> Just moments ago. One more time for the old man. The Brent Musburger can, and then a standing ovation from the Rupp Arena uh, crowd. How about that? Uh, it's so appreciated, but you know, Jay, the fans mean everything to me. They were, uh, they're the reason why we have jobs. They're the reason why we have basketball, football, all of the games. It's, it's the fans. You know, it's. It's nobody else. They're number one. Well, you're absolutely right, but you have made the games for the fans. That the games have been much more enjoyable because of you. And as a, a young man growing up, you made every game bigger. Well, I appreciate that. More yeah. enjoyable. It was uh, always felt like I was watching the game with a friend. Well, that's how I kind of approached it. Not a trained broadcast. But let's have a cold one and watch a game. You know, right now that'd be good. <laughs> I'm in. I see, uh, Mr. <laughs> Skipper, okay, and M's Drury, they want us to wait until we're all wrapped up here, okay? <laughs> so here we go. You know, I want to say this. Georgia came in here a 16-point underdog. They have played hard. They're still right in the thick of this with seven and a half minutes. This is a great coaching job by the dogs and their players. You've got to be proud of them if you're a Georgia fan down home in Athens. And there's Bam stepping out. Knocked it down to Jay. Remember, he's playing with four fouls. Obede basically dared Bam Adebayo to shoot that shot. And Adebayo took him up on it and knocked it down. Back to the 2-3 zone, and this helps protect Adebayo a bit in the middle, but it's also been very effective to get Georgia to stand around a bit. What a move. Did you see how Bam had to let him go? Yeah. No way he could uh, move over there on the baseline. Uh, when you get a guy trapped on the baseline, you got to keep him there. And they just let him get away. Adebayo just needed to get there and put his foot on the blue when he got there and take away that baseline. If he goes back out toward half court on the sideline, that's fine. points for Maiden here tonight. Monk, meanwhile, has 21 and Briscoe 11 for the Wildcats. They're both right. Both Maiden and, Bris er, and uh, Monk is basically at their averages. Uh, Yante Maiden at 30 against Kansas earlier this year along with 13 rebounds. He can, when he gets it going, and he had it going early, 
And Kentucky was able to shut him off in the first half. But in the second half, he's been much more aggressive, primarily because he's faced more man to man defense. I guess they're uh, cleaning up the uh, the floor, and time, Jay, for meaningful returns. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Uh, Malik Monk has had many happy returns in the second half. He has been aggressive offensively. He has gotten shots every which way. A little step back move, putting it on the deck. He's had catch and shoot where he's had to move into his shot, and just about every shot he's had in the second half has been challenged. And both he and Isaiah Briscoe have put on quite a show and have really carried this Kentucky team. But, you know, Brent, we talked about it in the first half. You know, Malik Monk really got himself going defensively first. And it was not a good start for Kentucky. But Monk did a really good job defensively, and that's not been his reputation. One, one area where he can really, really improve is on defense and on the glass. He can be a much better rebounder with his size and athleticism. So they had to clean a little blood out of the floor, and I think they were looking at uh, Maiton's hand over there in the, uh, in the huddle. But it's like we're good to go now, 65-58. Kentucky with the lead. In case you're just joining us, Wildcats are very shorthanded. De'Aaron Fox, a starting guard, is ill. I'm sure he's home watching uh, on television. And De'Aaron, we wish you nothing but the best. A quick recovery. Shasha Talia Jones also out. He's not feeling well. And the dogs are hanging tough against this shorthanded team. Look at Maytown! He was fouled, so he'll go to the free throw. And a great job of running straight to the rim by Yante Maiden. Put a ton of pressure on the big guys of Kentucky to run the floor, and they were trailing the whole way. I'll tell you, Gabriel really skied on that defensively. Now he's got a great motor, very athletic. You'll notice that the referee the crowd is getting a little exercised over these free throws. If, if a player misses two in a row in the second half, the opponent, uh, if the crowd gets up, they get a, some sort of gift certificate for food. There it is. <laughs> Free Chick-fil-A for everybody. Wow. That's what we're going after. This. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> So Frisk goes on the outside now with Willis. He drives, floats it up, back on the free throw line. A warrior. That's exactly right. A guy, Isaiah Briscoe, just a sophomore, but an old, an old gray beard on this team. Very good off the dribble, excellent along the baseline, one of the best guard rebounders in the country, and an underrated passer. Jay, is there any chance that uh, they will change the rules regarding uh, players staying in college, say, for two years and uh, seniors in high school can sign directly with the NBA? Is there any chance that they would alter the rule that we have now? I don't think so. It's it's a, as you know, it's an NBA eligibility issue right. for the draft. So it's collectively bargained between the league and the players. And the players don't want it. Uh, the league would rather have the players in school for a longer time, but the players, uh, they don't want to give anything up for it, and neither does the league. So they're at a little bit of a stalemate. They've agreed to one year, and I think that's where it's going to stay for the foreseeable future. I just think both games would be helped by that. Obviously, if you're a LeBron James, you've got that kind of talent, you should go right into the league, as he did. And, and so many of these youngsters that I see, Jay, that are going to be going in, should stay in college another year. They really should. I agree. They probably should. I just think it would help them long time, long term. And making all alone. Really good ball movement. They got the ball along the baseline. And then an excellent pass by Willridge. When he got it right along the baseline, he immediately looked into Maiden, who was, you're right, wide open. 
Jordan Harris has got to get a hand up on Malik Monk because he's going to pull up next time. Offensive foul. J.J. Frazier got hit really hard there. And he's down. He's going to need treatment. Really good pass and a defensive breakdown there by Kentucky. But he's holding the back of his head there. I'm not sure whether when he went down, whether he hit the stanchion or the floor. And of course, everybody in, uh, in sports concerned, as they should be, about the possibility of concussions. this drive right here you can see JJ Frazier right there trying to guard Isaiah Briscoe Briscoe called for the offensive foul yeah he hits the knee there of Wenyan Gabriel or the shin right with the back of his head and thankfully he is up and running back to the Georgia huddle five fifty three remaining Kentucky leads it by six. Well, Frazier's got to come out of the game before he comes back in because he was down. And so Jackson will bring it up for Georgia. Kentucky and man to man played a fair amount of zone. Retain possession. John Calipari is saying he doesn't think that ball was deflected by a Kentucky player. I think you have to look to Maiden here. He's got Wenyan Gabriel on him. Get him into the post. Drives through, scores, and coming to the line. Strong, strong moves. And one of the things affecting Kentucky right now is that Bam, Bam out of bio with the four fouls does not move in as aggressively as he normally will would on that help defense. And so this has become a little bit of a problem here for the Wildcats. And uh, Coach Mark Fox is going to see if he can exploit that. They're giving up straight line drives to the basket. You know, the last two second halves that they have played against Tennessee and against Kansas, Kentucky's given up 56% from the field in those two second halves. Chris goes back on that free throw line. He just keeps attacking and attacking. Monk is a little quiet after being blazing hot. Georgia's managed to cool number five off a little bit. Well, they've done a good job of staying with them, and then Isaiah Briscoe taking advantage of all the attention that Monk is getting. And he stays so low, and when he drives to the basket, he's so powerful. 20 points for Briscoe, 13 of that 20 coming in this half. And coming into this game, he had 22 rebounds in his last couple of games. He's got at least eight or nine in this one. Some full court pressure, Isaiah Briscoe. Gonna get all over JJ Frazier. Make it difficult for him to start in the offense. They double on Mason. Frazier's three is on the money. That's huge. So that inside outside interaction. Just just letting Yante Maiden touch it in the post. He's proven to be a good passer. That really opened it up. Lob, bam! All the attention that Malik Monk draws when he cut to the left wing. There was a ball screen in the middle. And they just throw it up to Adebayo. He knows what to do with it. Tough shot. Here's Monk. And he is fouled. That was Jordan Harris who got back on him, the freshman from Iron City, Georgia. Malik Monk makes a cut. 
across the floor here. And then there's going to be a ball screen right at the top. And ball screen and roll. There was nobody there. The floor was spread. Just a two-man game between Adebayo and Briscoe. And Briscoe's been so good off the dribble that you've really got to be concerned with not letting him turn the corner. And that opens it up for Adebayo. Only three. George Hill just gave an interesting stat. Long time. Stats man. Uh, works with Al Michaels. Works with me through the years. He just gave us that that Bam, Monk, and Briscoe have all their points here in the, uh, in the second half of this game. And Monk missed the free throws. Frazier at the other end. Yes, knocks it back down and pulls it to within two. What a gutsy shot in transition for J.J. Frazier. He has not been shooting it particularly well. Monk comes right back and this is a three and here comes Frazier again looking for a tie of the lead. Inside top. Oh, we're tied at 70. How about the hesitation move and then with the left hand, he's left handed but right around 6'10 Derek Willis. J.J. Frazier. So it's 347 remaining and take a look at this young man. Stop and pop, and now watch him come. Watch him go right to the rack. Time out. You say down goes Frazier there? The Kentucky and Georgia tied. 347 remaining to regulation. And Jay, let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch. Well, the leading candidates to this point in the season for the Wooden Award, and it's hard to go much past Josh Hart of Villanova and Frank Mason III of Kansas, but Purdue's Caleb Swanigan has been absolutely magnificent all season long, averaging close to 13 rebounds per game, and Jonathan Motley of Baylor, Lonzo Ball of UCLA have both propelled their teams to great heights this season. Motley, a long-armed, yet another long-armed athletic 3-4 hybrid that Scott Drew can throw out there that is a matchup nightmare. Inside of 20 on the shot clock. Monk comes around, curls, Willis steps out. The cross screen, Adebayo was wide open. They didn't get him the ball. Monk on a tough pull up. Georgia basketball coming down now for the lead. Monk can make those shots, but late in the game, you wonder if all the minutes that he's had to play will catch up to you a little bit. Peyton in underneath. Going to be a tough shot. Bam just holds his ground. And it goes the other way. A little surprised that Mayton didn't go up right away on the right side of the basket. Tried to pivot around, and Bam Adebayo just stayed straight up. Calipari calls the play as they come down. Still sticking with the zone look, but they match up out of it. And when Malik Monk cuts, they are staying with him. They're basically playing man once he cuts. Gabriel steps out, brings Mayton, loads Bam. Off the dribble, muscle in, no, put back, but Briscoe was fouled. He'll shoot for the lead on the free throw line. And that's the 10th rebound for Isaiah Briscoe in this game. 21 points, 10 rebounds. Last three games, that puts him at 32 rebounds. Bailey Hartung was talking about John Calipari and preaching toughness. And this young man has got enough toughness for him and a couple other players. Struggling a little bit here at the free throw line. Monk missed a pair. Now Briscoe misses one. Parker, incidentally, has fouled out of the game. That was number five on him. Well, Briscoe's an improved free throw shooter. He shoots over 70%. Boy, he gets there a lot, especially in this game. One point game. Dogs coming down. Frazier's been brilliant here the last couple of minutes. 
Gabriel's out on Maiden. There's the switch. Frazier on the pull-up. That is a really difficult job. Gabriel is right on him. Those double teams have been really effective on Yante Maiden. Briscoe turns it over. Now it's Frazier and Hawkins quickly back. And here's Harris. Gabriel came flying. And Harris nails a three. A huge three. And the dogs call a timeout with their lead at the 152 mark. Well, it looked like Isaiah Briscoe got hit on that last play. But he turned the ball over. And watch what Jordan Harris does here. Little fake, and Winyan Gabriel just flies right by, and the lefty drains that shot in great rhythm. That was a great little shot fake. Didn't have to do much, and got Gabriel to fly right by. So, reminder that tomorrow is signing day. All you college football fans, ESPNU, 8 a.m. Eastern. Then over to ESPN 2 at noon, then back to the U at 5 to wrap up the day. How's your favorite team going to do? They're going to tell you all about it. There's still some big names out there that haven't signed. So you want to check in tomorrow and see who wins. Who's going to wind up with the most five stars? Will it be Alabama again, or will they be cut tomorrow? We'll find out. Here we go now. Good basketball game. Georgia up by two, 151 remaining. I think if you would have told Mark Fox before the game, I'll spot you a two-point lead with a minute 45, would you take it? And I think you would. Great pass and great angle. That was a really good post-up by Bam Adebayo. That was obviously a called set play out of the timeout. And John Calipari tells Bam Adebayo, when you get the ball down low, no skill stuff, go up and dunk it. And that's what he went to do there. Seven for Adebayo. Gabriel replaces Willis. The 140 mark. This for the time. Frazier brings it down. Briscoe picks him up. Adebayo on Maiden. Nathan quickly doubled. Gabriel hit him on a catch. Frazier drives. Inside pass. Ball on the floor. And the held ball favors the dogs. Unless Maiden didn't have possession of the ball when he went down. That's, this would have been a walk. Well, he was fumbling. He did not have possession. Mayton at the buzzer. They wave it off. They wave it off. The ball was in, and they're going to go over and check this one on the monitor. Time was running down. Mayton pulled the trigger, and the officials are over at the monitor. Two seconds. He took a dribble when he caught it. Nope. It didn't look like he got it off. Yep, he did not get it off. Still in his hands when it went to zero. So Kentucky figures to take over. And out of bounds, the officials. It's kind of interesting about the monitors. They sometimes don't get the good pictures from our trucks. Derek Mobley, Bo Garrett, Doc Command Center. D-Mob, as we know him, of course, great director, came off the Clemson win over Alabama. Bo Garrett worked the great Orange Bowl. All those fellows inside the truck have done a wonderful job for me through the years. Billy Bunnell, who did so many football games with me as a producer, he's here. Great to see you, and what a game we've got here, gang. 1-10 to go now.
shooters on the floor, Derek Willis and Malik Monk. And Hawkins pulls up. But not so sure that that's the man John wanted to shoot that ball. It is not. Not that he can't make that, but not in that circumstance. Now it's Frazier and Briscoe fouled him. And Briscoe trying to get over the screen set by Yante Maybe just got caught a little bit behind Frazier and wound up fouling him. He just gets caught up there because he was just a bit behind getting over that screen. That puts J.J. Frazier on the free throw line. He is a near 90% free throw shooter. He's 2 of 3 tonight with 19. by two. Coming down to the 40-second mark. It's a good matchup for Monk to drive. Baseline fade. Short, but Bam with a powerful rebound, and he's fouled. He was fouled by Mayton. Malik Monk took a very difficult shot. He had Derek Obede guarding him on the right side. And I thought he was just going to try to drive him all the way to the basket. I think he should have along the baseline. Tried to pick up a foul. But that's one where you get a rebound. And you have a chance to salt this thing away. Especially on the road. That's a, The defensive rebound is a huge play. Adebayo missing his first free throw of the night. He struggled shooting free throws on Saturday night against Kansas. Right now, free throw blockouts are huge. We've got a one-point basketball game, and we've also got a timeout. 28.7 seconds. I wouldn't have it any other way. We're coming down to the closing seconds of a terrific basketball game here in the Rupp Arena, Jay, and... Uh, you know, the great coaches and athletes that I've had the pleasure of uh, being around through the years, it's, it's made this such a pleasure to come and enjoy games like this with you and the fans and everybody. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's special. Well, you've made it special. Uh, and, uh, thank, you. thank you for all you've done. It, it, from a lousy athlete who enjoyed having you do his games, you uh, it was an honor. Uh, you were pretty good that year. No, I him. wasn't. You know, <laughs> but you know was, never nervous was okay. He, he was a, really good. <laughs> you know, I think against a lesser defender, he could have had 50. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's... Uh, Let's go to the strategy of this game because we're sitting on a on a one-point basketball game, Jay. What's your feeling? Well, any foul, obviously, you're in the double bonus, so it puts George at the line for two free throws. But I think what John Calipari is going to want to do is try to use some time here to get a steal. And so you don't have to foul right away, but you don't have to be worried about a foul. Go for the steal, go for the ball. Get an initial trap. And... If you can make him catch it in the in the coffin corner along the sideline where you can get a trap, you want to try to get that initial trap and get that steal without having to foul right away. You got still got plenty of time to, to get a steal here. I want to go back to one of our storylines at the top of the broadcast. Under John Calipari, Kentucky has never lost three games in a row. Of course, they came in tonight with a two-game losing streak, losing to Tennessee and Kansas. 75-74. George, full court press. George just got to send somebody wrong there. There it is, the corner. They got it. Boy, they didn't trap. Dribbles out. They didn't trap on Jackson. It came right up with the ball. And a foul. Well, it was good strategy. They just didn't get the trap right away. They had him right in the corner. But they only let five, six seconds go off. And even if both these free throws are made, it's still a one possession game. And there's way too much time on the clock for Georgia to think about fouling up three. You don't want to do that until you get five, six seconds left.
Briscoe puts it on the deck, drives, and it's swatted out of bounds by Mayton. 17 seconds on the clock. And that was a really smart play, Brent, by J.J. Frazier. When Briscoe turned the corner, he didn't foul him. And that allowed Mayton the opportunity to come over and wipe it away. Got a bio. Puts it back in Briscoe's hands. 13 on the clock, drives it again. Now 10.8. Georgia thinks it went off of Kentucky and under two minutes they get to go over and look at the replay to see if it indeed did go off of Kentucky. Go Big Blue! Go Big Blue! Go Big Blue! Go Big Blue! I thought it was Georgia there. Um, I thought it hit Willridge first when it was live, but I couldn't really tell there. Yeah, I thought it hit his leg, but so he looked like it changed direction when it hit, like it might have hit his knee. Victorian Wilridge, number 13. It went right through Obede's legs. I don't think it touched him at all. But I thought it hit the, the left knee of Wilridge there. This is a tough one. I, I think they may have to just go with the initial call here. And that call is Kentucky has the basketball with 10.8 on the clock. Off the knee they rule. So the out of bounds, Kentucky. Trail by two with 10.8. Briscoe has driven twice. Monk, of course, might be the go-to guy. Same alignment they had earlier when they got the ball into Adebayo. And you always have to watch for the inbound man. It's Malik Monk to come in and get it. And that Georgia could be either a, two or a three. Georgia wants a timeout. They want to talk about the defense. Coach Fox with his assistant coaches going over the various options and what they might do with this inbounds pass, Jay. And you have to expect that John Calipari will change the alignment after this timeout and give it a different look. Kentucky has a timeout remaining. This was Georgia's last timeout of the game. You have to go back to John's years at Memphis before you can find a, a three-game losing streak by Coach Cal. He's trying to get this one into overtime or win it here in the last 10.8 seconds. And this is such, Brent, a, a, such a big game for Georgia. You know, Mark Fox's team, that loss they had in overtime to Florida, the loss that they had to te at Texas A&M with the clock malfunction. You know, Georgia could have been looking at, you know, coming into this building if they had those two wins and playing for first place in the SEC. But for them to have overcome what Mark Fox really termed a, a bit of a broken spirit, that they were they were really knocked back after those two losses. They fought back and got a hard fought win over Texas, but you know, beating Texas at home and then beating Kentucky and Rupp are two different things. They, they've really performed at a at a high level in this building tonight. Briscoe will take it out of bounds. Nice Mock play. Catch and fire. Yes! Kentucky leads it. Six seconds to go. Knocked out to the right. And we go to overtime. What a fabulous play run by Kentucky. 
Malik Monk, who was taking the ball out of bounds before the timeout, comes off a little screen and then gets a rescreen. See, he comes off the screen and then gets a rescreen by Bam Adebayo and shoots it right over Obede, who had to switch out on him. That was absolutely beautiful and perfectly executed. Just had his right foot on the line. I thought that might have been a three. But he was inside that line, but really beautifully executed out of the timeout. And a great call by John Calipari to change the play after the timeout by Georgia. I, I honestly thought it was a three. I did too. When he shot it. But we'll go to overtime. We'll take it. Deadlocked at 76. Under the gun, Malik Mock. Dale's great shot. Welcome back to Overtime, presented by Continental Tires. So, Jay Billis, I can't let the dream die without some overtime here tonight. They don't want arena. you to leave, partner. That was a great design oh, on that play. Just beautiful. By Coach Cal. Talk about a chess game between two outstanding coaches. The timeout called by Mark Fox. And then the, the play completely changed. When Mark Fox called the timeout, Malik Monk was the inbounds man. And then when they came back out, then they ran that little screen, re-screen action. You can see Monk comes right back off. That's the second screen. He got an initial screen from Adebayo. He basically started where the shot came from. And then... Came off a screen by Adebayo into the middle of the lane where it says SEC, then turned around and got a rescreen. Just beautiful. <laughs> One of the officials, Don Daly, coming over to our broadcast position and telling Brett Musburger, we don't want you to leave. <laughs> Adebayo has played a lot of minutes with four fouls. And we begin the five-minute overtime. Kentucky staying in man-to-man. -man. Derek Willis guard Yante Maiden. Deflected. Kentucky ball. Here comes Hawkins. Driving to the rim. They went to Maiden, the pass was deflected. Boy, offensive foul, it's against Georgia. That's Willridge. Dominique Hawkins jumped right in front of him. And did a terrific job of staying in front, and he just ran him over. Did you think he was set, Jay, or did you think he was still moving? You don't really need to be set there. Uh, you're, you're allowed to continue to move. I mean, he had... Legal guarding position doesn't mean you have to have the ball. Frisco sends it back. Willis open three. Offensive rebound again, and Monk will fire a deep wow. one for three that time. 81 76. Kentucky rolls to a five point lead in OT. Frazier. Knocks down a tough two. <laughs> well, what an answer to get Georgia back within one possession. Well, how about that rebound by Isaiah Briscoe? And any time you get an offensive rebound, that's the best time to shoot a three. And that was a challenge three by Malik Monk. From the wing, rattles out. Bam dives for it. 
Loose ball on the floor. Georgia scoops it, but it's out of bounds. Kentucky basketball. Terrific rebound here by Isaiah Briscoe. And any time there's an offensive rebound, boy, it's a great time to shoot a three. And just stepping, stepping out of bounds, there's been a little bit of talk between the players. Isaiah Briscoe and a couple of the Georgia players jawing at one another. The official is doing a good job of you know, putting a stop to it without having to call a technical or anything like that. Tempers run a little bit high, but you can see why. Both these teams showing a ton of fight down the stretch. Monk flashes, drops it in. And it's on Georgia. The entry pass. And the foul. Of Bede. That's four. Uh, he has really stuck with it in this game. No rhythm at all. Barely played in the first half due to those two fouls. And he's been saddled with four a good bit of this second half. Four-point lead. Maton. Double. And foul is called on the basket of Bede. Score it. How many good passes has Yontay Maiden made in this game? Anytime he's been doubled, he had one deflected. I know he had one turnover in the first half, but two guys on him, and Dominic Hawkins couldn't get back to rotate down. And a terrific pass and catch finished by Obede. Obede, a career high here tonight. 18 points. He also has 11 rebounds. He's played real well. Kentucky's up by one at the three-minute mark. Overtime. Hawkins sends it back, and they move it to Monk. That's a three. Yes. What a game by Malik Monk. That's 35. Mayton, battle for the rebound, out of bounds. They rule Georgia basketball. Basketball, 2-13 and OT. The double teams have been effective to get the ball out of the hands of Yante Maiden. And when he kicked it back out, Kentucky did a really nice job of recovering, forced that turnover. Long trying to post, was trying to post J.J. Frazier. He can shoot right over Frazier. Lob, bang! What a great pass by Monk. Yeah. 
Coach Box very upset. He's claiming that traveling was not called. This is an alley bam. Malik Monk simply took this game over, Jay, in the second half and overtime. Well, he had six points in the first half, and then this at the end of regulation, the screen and then the restream as he ties the game to send it into overtime. And he has been just as good in overtime as he was in the second half. 35 points for Malik Monk. And then the pass off the little pick and roll on the side as he throws the alley-oop to Bam Adebayo. But Isaiah Briscoe in this game has been outstanding as well. 22 points, 11 rebounds, and 8 assists for Isaiah Briscoe. A near triple-double. Mayton, and it's turned over. Here's Monk. Taking some seconds off. Now he have given up to Briscoe. Well, Georgia's got to have a stop here. Got to switch now. Mayton on Briscoe. Monk lost the handle. Got the ball back. Frazier puts it on the deck. Fires a three. Long rebound to Frazier. Got an open man underneath. Stamp and out of bio. Pulls down the defensive rebound. What a game he's played in the second half. Saddled with four fouls. Georgia is forced to foul. And Frazier will jump in on Briscoe. And he'll come up to the free throw line with Kentucky up six and inside of a minute. What a gallant effort by Georgia here tonight. I'm not sure that they've got enough left in the tank for one more burst. But this is huge with Briscoe at the free throw line. Yeah, that was a tremendous opportunity when J.J. Frazier was able to strip the ball from Malik Monk going up for that shot. But they weren't able to get a score on the other end. So now you go up basically three possessions. That's exactly right. Seven point lead and the window is closing. But there's still a good bit of time left on this clock, so... Georgia just has to come down and get a quick score. And it doesn't have to be a three. That's offensive. Goes to Kentucky. Watch the right arm of J.J. Frazier. Dominic Hawkins staying in front, backpedaling. And he just shoves him back with that right arm. No question about it. The referee's right on top of it. Monk dribbling, waiting for the foul, and there it is. So I think, Brent, now everybody can see why John Calipari wants Malik Monk to be aggressive offensively as J.J. Frazier fouls out after a, a terrific performance on the road. 23 points. For the young man, Georgia played their hearts out here tonight. And a shorthanded Kentucky team hang, they hung tough in the first half. Stayed with it. This young man, Monk, took over. And they had to do it with makeshift lineups, playing different roles. All different kinds of defenses. They went man, they went zone, they pressed full court. Terrific coaching job by Calipari and the Kentucky staff. Shorthanded team. Jackson, 33 seconds. Hawkins is on Mayton. Now, Hawkins is a good defensive player. And that foul is going to be on Georgia. And that is Derek. So the third Bulldog is fouled out of this game. It's one of those heartbreaking losses. 
Well, they put that foul on Kentucky. I thought it was on Obede. So die. Wow. I think the crowd did too for a minute. <laughs> but they're catching up. Well, this one's gonna this one's gonna sting for Georgia to work this hard and it was a bit short. Jay, excuse me, that, that foul was on Willis. Adebayo pulls it down. 24 seconds to go. Up nine. George is not going to foul. What a win for Kentucky. In overtime. Kentucky defeats Georgia. 90 to 81. The Wildcats snap their two-game losing streak. And John Calipari still has never lost three straight games as coach of the Wildcats. It wasn't easy, though. That's off to the Georgia Bulldogs. Played their hearts out here tonight. Well, hats off to Georgia, but also hats off to you, Brent Musburger, for decades of service to the game the games that you cover. John Calipari wants to come over and... Hey, John. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. That's a great, great comeback. Great job. Tell the kids. Wonderful. Uh, but, Brent, want to thank you for all, all that you've done for not only for broadcasting and for all, but for all of us fans who watched you over the years, and you made everything better for all of us. You made the games better. You made everything bigger. And uh, you're you're an institution, but one of the one of the best people I've ever known. And we want to want to show this to you right now. Take a take a look back at the great career of the great Brent Musburger. Thank you, Jay. You are looking live. You are looking live. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. Welcome aboard. I'm Brent Musburger along with Rick Berry. Welcome to our brand new home. Welcome, everybody, to Belmont Park. All right, big son, I predict starting for you. Take your hat off to Mr. Jimmy Johnson. He went out with guns blazing on a dusty street in South Bend, Indiana. Rags to riches just went riches to riches. Today, Jeff Jordan makes his 500th career start. There will be no dynasty. That's it. This is for all the Tostitos. A perfect ending to an imperfect system. Garhood, turn around, shot in the air. It's good. Moody flushed, throws it down. Caught by Boston College. I don't believe it. Deep, deep. Billings is going to the championship. At the buzzer, they poured on its way. Oh, oh, oh my oh, goodness, oh, buddy. Oh, oh. They gave him a facial. Saved the women and children. You know, I knew it was going to be good, Parker, but but I had I had no idea what we were in for. Folks, I've had the best seat in the house. Thanks for sharing it. I'll see you down the road. What a road we've traveled together. You know, thanks so much to you for uh, sharing your time with me. What great memories we've had over the last almost 50 years. But now it's time for me to turn over the play-by-play -play duties to those fine young announcers who are growing up at ESPN. Make no mistake about it. I'm going to miss games like this. I'm going to miss working with all the great analysts that I've been with through the years. But... Maybe you'll pay me a visit out of my new place in Las Vegas. Why not? We can share a cold one and maybe a win or two. Anyway, thank you so very much for all the appreciation and all the great moments that we've experienced together. God bless.